up everybody? Today I'm gonna go out into the field and I'm gonna test out the JTS AK-12 uh, with 25 rounds of buckshot. And I'm gonna use the five round magazine and I'm gonna use four pellet buckshot and 20 rounds, which is two boxes of this. It's the Fiocchi four pellet buckshot um, with the drum. Uh, but before I get started, I want to talk about just a couple things. Uh, first off, what I'm going to be shooting is an old, like, 1960s, 1970s hollow core door inside. And I know you're going to say, well, we know it's going to pass through it, but we know those, you know, the doors from back in the day were a little stronger than the ones nowadays. I want to see what it's going to do with the uh, wood bracing behind it, see how much it actually passes through, what will get stuck, and if anything gets stuck or if, or if it actually will drop the bullets down, you know, drop, drop them down way further, um, <clears throat> or just get stuck in the bracings behind it. Uh, one thing, I already recorded it, one thing is I did bring my AR-15 out there and I wanted to test something out and I forgot to record it. It's a new magazine I got from the uh, gun show I went to this past weekend. It is a 41 round magazine. This holds 40, then one in the chamber. So. I did test it and forgot to record it. It works very, very well. So, and I'll show that later when the next time I go shooting. And uh, I wanna talk just really quick about high brass, low brass I've talked about in the past and the difference. And a reason why it, low brass and low steel will actually malfunction your AR version um, of a 12 gauge or your AK and why it's not very well and why low brass is really just meant for a shotgun, shotgun platform like a pump, brake action, regular semi-auto. Uh, anything magazine fed, you're gonna have a problem. Let's look really close at the high brass. Now this is one of those uh, four pellet buck shots. You'll see right here, you see these lips. Look what happens when I turn it. You will see a line and maybe a little one right here, and that's it's from it too. Um, it actually digs into it. Now, the reason why AR, regular AR-15s and things like that run well is because that lip is touching brass or steel, like we see right here. Now, we got one right here. Now, these are the magazines from the AK-12, uh, the JTS AK-12. See, if you look at right here, now let's turn it. You can see it's grinding into the plastic. So, what this does is when it's pushed through into the chamber, it's actually scraping the plastic and grabbing that steel. See how it's super stiff like that. It's grabbing that steel and stripping it, or the low brass, stripping it away a little bit and it's getting into your gun. So that's why, one of the reasons why you'll have malfunctions is if you keep using this stuff. Uh, I know some people have used it a lot, but at the same time I've seen them have mail, or, uh, uh, malfunctions after using it or something happens. Now in this video, I do have two malfunctions where uh, it ejects, but it doesn't reload it. Um, and that might be my, you know, gas setting that was set on three. So it could be something like that. And it just wouldn't feed back in twice, but I didn't have to eject the shell out or anything like that to get the feed again. So it could just be my gas setting. And that's usually what it is. Other than that, it fed great. Uh, and finally, before we go on the field, I know a lot of people have hit up Roger Allen Baker from Ultra Effect Studios about this grip. And he's told everybody at the moment, well, he's told everybody no. And I want to clarify what's going on with that. What Roger's doing right now is making sure that every state, you know, he wants to cover every state law. He wants to make sure that he's not doing something illegal uh, because gun laws are different from state to state. So he's doing more research into that. He does want to sell them or... Another option that he might be doing, and I think he's actually planning on doing, is uh, with the demand of that, he's approaching JTS and sending them, uh, you know, out of Katy, Texas, sending them an email about it, and also, um, you know, willing to sell them his program so then they can make it and sell it. So you just have to stay tuned. I'll let you guys know when it is available and what's happening with it. Uh, and he's still talking. He talked to a few people where they said, oh, it should be fine. You should be able to make them and sell them. And, but he just wants to make sure everything's covered. He doesn't want to put his livelihood or his family um, in danger of being 
you know, messed with by the government or something like that. So that's why he's telling people no. And it's just no at the moment. So, so yeah, if you're looking for one of these, just be patient. One of these grips, just be patient. And uh, I'll let you guys know when they're available and who will have them available. It may not even be him. He may sell it to somebody else and they'll make it available to everybody. With that, let's go out in the field. So what we have here is an old hollow cord door. Now, this is something that was on a closet or something at one point. I found this by the dumpster. And the, even these old like closet hollow core doors are pretty solid. Say if you live in an old home and uh, it just comes down to defending yourself. Go with the JTS. We're going to test out the durability of this front grip using buckshot. And uh, going to have a lot of fun with it. Let's check out the ammo. Uh, the JTS with five round mag with four buckshot and that is federal premium. And after that, we have two boxes, uh, the Fiocchi brand. It's the same thing as the federal, same velocity and all that crap. Uh, both two and three quarter, but you can see the BBs right there. And that's what we're gonna finish the door off with. So we're gonna test the door, see which one's better for home defense. Uh, see what it can withstand and also test out on the JTS that the modifications of that new front grip. So let's get to it. Then we're going to finish it off with the old goat sack. Now, if you're wondering why I call it a goat sack, have you ever seen the ball sack on a goat? It's huge, but their uh, pecker is quite small, so it's the old goat sack. Okay, so I've edited most of the stuff out when I used my AR-15. But I wanted to show you guys this part. I kind of talk about real quick that I forgot to record like a dumbass. And uh, I just want to show you guys how it passed through the door and through the wood in the back and how far it dropped. So it dropped about, you know, about 20 feet afterwards. Uh, the farthest was about 25, 30 feet after that. So once it hit, went through both, it just dropped. Uh, <clears throat> but usually when I try to do some recording, Especially in this stuff, this kind of stuff, I like to have my uh, son out there to help, uh, so he can record one spot and I can record the other. But unfortunately, it was just me today. But uh, let's get back to it. So I just shot the AR-15. Forgot to push record. Pretty stupid. And I only brought enough ammo out for it. But let's go take a look at what happened. I shot it about 10 yards. <sighs> Can't believe that shit. And I'm not driving all the way back out to uh, to get more ammo. So but let's take a look at what happened at about 10 yards with a 40 round magazine. All right, so we got all the holes there. You gotta remember this is an old hollow corridor for like a closet. Can't believe I didn't push it hard. And looks like they all successfully went through and even through down here. See in the grass, the spots, <laughs> over here we're pulling it up so i'm very impressed with that wolf ammo in that magazine had zero failures and i'm sorry i forgot to record it but i'll show you some other time what it does so next let's put that buckshot into the jts all right i know i'm recording so at about 10 yards let's use a five round mag with a four buckshot with the uh jts ak-12 let's see what happens five shots Four buckshot, federal premium. Let's see. Okay, the gun's cleared everything. Kind of went a little wild with my shots here. Didn't kick that bad. I thought it was going to kick a lot worse. There's the front, but let's look at the other side and see the damage. All right, let's put the drum in and finish her off. So far the grip has worked out just fine. All right, we're loaded up. Let's uh, have a little fun with the drum, with the goat sack.
down three too, so you're gonna have to remember that. <laughs> One thing I'll tell you too is the gun, the GTS I have is really not broken in yet. I really haven't done over 200 rounds to it. So it's one of those things where kind of got to get it broke in. But I'm really impressed with the low recoil using buckshot. Really super impressed. I actually, my uh, AR has more kick. So I'm super Super impressed with it. All right, we're back up and running. I got about five rounds left. Let's finish her off. Come on, man. Oh, it's broken head. <laughs> okay, okay. Set it back up, see if it'll set back up. All right, see if it'll hold. I'm super impressed with how durable this grip is though. Really impressed. Let's go straight for the handle. Let's see if we get the handle. Come on, man. Oh, it's broken. <laughs> Let me show you something here. This is why you don't buy cheap scopes. And this one here is a super cheap scope. It blew, <laughs> it blew the optical out of it. The lens out of the optical. Everything else held up except this cheap piece of shit. And I knew it was cheap. It, it came with I don't know, like a package deal with another scope. Let's uh, go look at the door. All right. So, yeah, got the handle on that first shot right there of the last setup. Right there. Had a couple failures, but nothing crazy, really. Like I said, it's not really broken in. Look at that. Yeah, I'm very impressed with that JTS. The front grip that Roger did. And just, that was where it was held against it from the top. That's done. Holy shit. It blew that out the back. Just held up very well. This Magwell from Mod Max held up. And of course, this strap set up single sling from mod max as well until next time look at that shit <laughs> good grief and sorry again that i didn't record shooting this but this worked very well i got this at a uh, gun show this is a 41 round mag it's awesome um until okay so as we've seen there was two malfunctions um it blew right through that door and right through the bracings and tore the bracings just right in half so it did a nice job. I mean, for home defense with the two problems, it's still pretty reliable, but you know, I mean, just make sure you got the right stuff set up inside of it and you should be fine. Uh, and at some people I've talked to or they put in the comments, they call the JTS AK-12 a piece of crap. And uh, my opinion is, and I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, I'm not gonna, bullshit anybody i'm not looking for sponsors and shit i you know i can't disagree that it's a piece of shit and i can't agree it's a piece of shit because a gun you get for about 400 bucks to 600 bucks you're gonna have your issues the machining isn't the best uh i mean it seems like almost everybody has their own different opinion on their own experience with it so i mean you're running that risk when you're when you're not spending a lot of money on a gun uh so is it the best gun for that price? 
No, it's not. It's 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 not. It's absolutely not. But it it's I'm definitely gonna get my money's worth out of it because I don't plan on beating the shit out of it. Uh, when I go to the range, I have always a set amount I use so I can go back out and enjoy it again. I know some people they'll go out and they'll shoot like 400 rounds at one time out of a gun. It's like why don't you bring more than one so you can kind of space it out a little more than worry about what ammo you get. And one thing that kind of bugs me is uh, two things. As I watch some of these YouTube guys and they talk about the shortage is almost over. Bullshit. It's not even close to being over. This is how you know when it's over. When you can find two common rounds that will sit on the shelf for a long time that at one point used to sit on the shelf for a long time. For me, it's 38 Special, 357, or any gauge, a 12 gauge in two and three quarter inch length. That was everywhere and it was just there at any time. Now, you can't find it hardly. It, like here, for 12 gauge, it's all three inch and my drum doesn't take three inch. So, but I got three inch for other stuff and for hunting. So, but when that kind of shit is sitting on the shelves and they just sit there for weeks and weeks and weeks and months and whatever, that's when you know the shortage is over, when all that kind of stuff comes back. So if you hear anybody right now say the shortage is almost over, it's clickbait and it's bullshit. So, and I'm not gonna bullshit you. It's not over. It will, will not be over until maybe three and a half years or seven and a half, depends on how long Biden's in office. And that's just the truth. Uh, yeah, so that bugs me. And also when you hear some of them say, I talk to manufacturers, or I talk to this person, talk to that person. They go, what we need to do is stop buying so much. But then on their next video, they go ahead and shoot about five, 600 fucking rounds. So they're going out and buying it in bulk anyways. So it's very hypocritical for anybody to say, stop buying it or slow down on buying it when they're stockpiling and shooting the shit out of it. So that's just clickbait too. So if anybody tells you that and you see that on, see that on YouTube, them the fuck off because you're both full of shit because if you see them doing that that's very hypocritical don't tell somebody to stop buying so much when you're buying a ton that is the most hypocritical bullshit i've ever seen space your shit out properly know when you can get your shit and plan accordingly that's what you have to do and if you know you won't get it in a while space it out if you know you can get it faster then do it but just don't tell people not to buy shit but at the end of the day, I wasn't disappointed with the JTS. I, the, reco the recoil was really, really nice with buckshot. Um, I've shot in everything but buckshot through it and slugs. Um, I'm saving my slugs for hunting season, so I don't want to use a bunch of those up. Uh, buckshot's like my backup, so and I got a bunch of that. So I haven't shot any of that. I've shot everything else through it uh, with high brass, the low brass. Like I said, I've shot that, the, st the steel shot crap, and it just, that bleh, sucks. I just gave an example at the beginning um, of what happens with that. So uh, next time, I think I'm going to show you guys that 41 round magazine. I'm sorry I didn't record it for this video because I was stupid, didn't record it. So uh, yeah, uh, <clears throat> that's it. Until next time, you guys stay groovy.